O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. We pray this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Dust is something we aren't quite sure where it came from or how it got here, but we know that it's everywhere. Each particle of dust is very small, but once enough dust builds up, all of a sudden dust is substantial. Next thing we know, dust is covering the furniture, reminding us that we have let one week too many pass by between dustings. Dust also can build up outside after we haven't had a good soaking rain in a long while. The road or trail dry and cracked from not enough rain can become dusty. We walk or drive down it and find a dusty trail blowing up behind us. Perhaps the boots we wore out on a hike through the mud, once they dry out, now look quite dusty. We go into our attic or our basement looking for that something once stowed away or long forgotten. And instead of finding it, instead, we find everything there covered in dust. We breathe in the dust, and suddenly we cannot help but cough. Maybe we even learn we are allergic to dust mites, microscopic creatures that apparently thrive on eating our dust. And the next thing we know, we have to go buy special filters or air purifiers and coverings for our mattresses and pillows. We don't often want to linger in dust-filled places. Our instinct is either to get out of the dust-filled place or to get the dust off ourselves and our belongings. But our culture idealizes cleanliness. We aim for a perfectly clean, dust-free existence. But I wonder what dust is. Dust is not just another word for dirt. And dust is not the same as ash. Dust is an eclectic mixture. One source I read says that dust can be made up of pollen, bacteria, smoke, ash, salt crystals from the ocean, and small bits of dirt or rock, including sand. Dust can also contain tiny fragments of human and animal skin cells, pollution, and hair. In some places, the wind blows dust into something called loess, which is a sediment that is loose and fragmented. It can even be many meters deep. Loess often develops into fertile soil for agriculture because it retains water, allows many different plants to take root, and has, has abundant ingredients and nutrients. Two famous places where loess is found in China and in Iowa are known for their extremely fertile soil. So if enough of the right mixture of dust accumulates, it can be, under the right conditions, a rich place for life to grow. When we look at this verse from Psalm 130 in context, this verse describing us humans as being dust, we see that God remembering that we are but dust is a realization that flows forth from God's unending compassion and mercy for us. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. God sees each one of us through the eyes of a parent who cares for their children. Just as a father or a mother realizes all of the influences and memories and experiences that have made each one of their children uniquely who they are, so too does God know what we are made of. Just as a parent recalls those running feuds between siblings, the white lies that snowballed into elaborate falsehoods, the curfews disregarded, or the chores left undone, but then can choose to quickly forget these misdeeds, forgive us and hope that we will make a far better choice next time, so too are we loved lavishly and endlessly by our God. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. God lovingly sweeps all the dust of sin away, 
from the easiest to reach surfaces of who we are to our seemingly most hidden and hardest to reach corners. A few years ago, when I was a campus ministry intern at the UT Austin Episcopal Student Center, a song that we often sang in our Sunday evening Eucharist was called Beautiful Things by Lisa and Michael Gungor. Now, I'd never heard this song before that year, but it quickly became one of my favorites. The following summer, I invited a few of those students to play this song at my ordination to the priesthood. All this earth, could all that is lost ever be found? Could a garden come up out of this ground at all? You make beautiful things out of the dust. You make beautiful things out of us. All around, hope is springing up from this old ground. Out of chaos, life is being found in you. You make beautiful things out of the dust. You make beautiful things out of us. This song expresses so much about the transformative power of Christ's love in our lives, both individually and together. As one of the songwriters, Michael Gungor, shared in an interview, during the time of beautiful things, I was reading a lot of different theologians who have opened up my view of God and the world and his story. Having the story opened up helped me to realize this is God's story, that he's the creator of all things, and that we're invited into this process of recreating that started with the empty tomb. Elsewhere in the Bible, in Hebrews 6, we find similar imagery of life rising up out of the dust, beginning to flourish and grow as God intended. Ground that drinks up the rain falling on it repeatedly and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is cultivated receives a blessing from God. At the Episcopal Student Center, it seemed appropriate to sing this song together with these faithful college students who were in an intensely and especially intense period of developing and growing into the people God had made each one of them to be. But then again, all of us are always still growing up into the beautiful people God has created each one of us to be. As Jan Richardson wonders in her poem, Blessing the Dust, all those days you felt like dust, like dirt, as if all you had to do was turn your face toward the wind and be scattered to the four corners. Did you not know what the Holy One can do with dust? Dust is a gathering up of little tiny pieces of everything. Wherever we go, we bring our dust along with us and we pick up new dust. Dust is the evidence of the places we have been and the things that we have done. Dust is evidence that we are not living in some hermetically sealed bubble. Dust is evidence that we are living out in the world amongst the elements, that we are magnets for tiny particles of everything and everyone we encounter, everywhere in the world we may go. Today, as we begin this journey through the 40-day wilderness that is Lent, we are beginning an annual ritual of preparing ourselves spiritually for re-experiencing the cross on Good Friday, the tomb on Holy Saturday, and resurrection on Easter. Today, we are reminded that with Adam, we are formed of dust. And so too, as we come face to face with our own sinfulness and mortality, we are reminded that to dust we shall return. Today, on Ash Wednesday, let us commit to spending these next 40 days praying, contemplating, and wondering what the Holy One can do with dust. 40 days of wondering together what the Holy One can do with us. Amen. Amen.